it's that time of year where I better start thinking about wood burners and range cookers. They're a bit of a hazard there. We took the board off and looked behind it and thought, what on earth's that? Right, I've got me cup of tea. It's time for me, as usual, to go outside, sit down on my thinking bench, and see what I'm gonna do today. See you outside. There's a definite chill in the air. Now yesterday we had our first ground frost, which, when you live in rural places, and you've got no central heat in, you just flick a switch, you think, hmm. It's that time of year where I better start thinking about wood burners and range cookers. So I think in today's video, I'll go through what I do every uh, beginning of autumn really, uh, twice a year. I'll go through and clean all the range cooker down, um, make sure all the valves are working correctly, make sure I've got some wood, which I haven't yet, but I will do shortly. Um, so yeah, make sure um, everything's working okay. I shall put um, a raminage de bouche, I think they call it in French, and basically what that is, it's a, um, it looks like a little log. You put it in your fire, uh, you let it burn down, and it creates a chemical reaction inside your flue, and it loosens up all the, um, all the soot and uh, stuff that's accumulated throughout the year. Also gives me a chance to see whether the flue is actually clear, no bird's nests in the top blocking it, so just a general service so I think I'll do that today I'll give it a clean up as well and uh, yeah get ready for the coming weather it'll soon be here oh. so before I can start any work on here I think I need to clear off all the pots and pans that's better I can see what I'm doing now now for the next bit I'm going to call upon my assistant Henry he's worked with me for many years on various projects never let me down so and here's Henry. Occasionally he gets a little bit choked up, but I just tell him, you know, get on with it and just suck it up. And uh, yeah, he pulls himself together. So let's give him a whirl. On a more important issue, do not ever use a hoover to suck out the embers from your fire. Even if it's been put out for a few days, because the embers will possibly reignite once they get into the bag, dust and hair. So it's very important. However, you can, if you buy a special adapter that goes in between the range, the cooker, whatever you're hoovering out, between that and your hoover, and what that does, the vacuum pulls it into a, like a stainless steel bucket, if you like, and that could be safely emptied. You can buy them specially, uh, they're not very expensive. Some have got motors on them, some haven't, so yeah it's uh, very important uh, not to use your hoover without one of those catches so yeah right the next job is to check for any anything that's fallen down behind it i've got a torch and yeah as you can see there's two blocks of wood so anything like that that's flammable or any obstructions check all around the back of your fire make sure nothing's slipped down the back so i shall get them out a bit of a hazard there. there. So before I light the fire, I'm gonna switch the camera around and just show you how this beauty works. Here goes. I purchased this range probably about nine years ago when we moved into this property. We bought it from an antique shop that was just closing down. And I think we paid 350 euros Sam spotted it straight away and said, I want that. So that was a good choice. So right, what we've got here is obviously the, the top cooking plates. We've got two here. Those rings come out. And what happens, different size pots sit inside there. So it's closer to the heat and it cooks a lot quicker. But sort of nowadays, we're not really using pots like that so much. So that's the main cooking ring. This is the firebox here. Now, 
it's just got a bit of paper in there. What I normally do when I fire it up, light the paper first, no wood in there, get a little bit of smoke going, go outside, make sure all the valves are open, that's the first damper. I'll then go outside and check that I've got a flow there and smoke coming out the top so I know it's clear. Then I'll build the fire up slowly. So right, that's the firebox. Next to it here is the main cooking oven. There's a big enamel grill there that sits on all the pots. And this here is a mechanism where you can alter the amount of heat that stays in the oven. It sort of puts the door on an angle, if you like. So you can lock it there, there or there. So that's that. We then move back up to the top. This is the second ring. Doesn't get as hot as that one. So it's a little bit smaller. And then next to it here, not that we use it, but we have the facility to heat water. So that's rather handy. And down here is the tap. Still works. We just don't ever use it. Right, and then going down to the bottom of the fire is the warming oven. Now inside there is some other baffles and plates. Now that is for when we want to run this on coal. They go in there and the baffle plates sit round here so it holds the coal in the firebox. It's a multi-fuel burner so we can use wood, coal, and here is the box that catches all the embers and the ashes. So that has to be emptied on a two day basis, I suppose. Now I've already refurbished this. I've put new gaskets all the way around so there's a tight seal. So yeah, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely cooker to, to use. Still practical. Right, this vent here, inside I'll probably have a closer look once I get my torch out. But at the back of this oven, this operates a flap. So this is the flap that I was just talking about inside at the base of the flue. At the moment it's open, so what that would do would draw the main air past the first burner on the left and then straight up the flue. Now if we wanted to direct the heat from this side of the firebox over to the secondary burner and where we heat the water, we operate the valve on the front and we can shut it up. Now what that does, that sends the hot air, gases, fire, whatever you want to call it, across here. So this ring here heats the water up and then enters at the base of the flue there and then goes up. So that's a look inside. Now once the fire's going, the way we control it, is an air vent here when we start the fire that's wide open and then gradually we'll shut this up to control the amount of heat and flame it depends on what fuel you're using if it's wood maybe not so much air if it's coal maybe a bit more so that's that that is the valve that operates the flap at the base of that so yeah it's very controllable considering, you know, it's well over 100 years old, 120, 30. There, yeah, that's nice and clean. Pop these rings back on. side. Right, that's that stage done. Right, now to clean the ash box out. So the ash is collected in here, that slides out. It's quite a big build up of ash. Now it's important that you get this out, as ash can be quite corrosive. I've got the wrong shovel here. <laughs> and then, uh, not good to breathe in either, so keep the dust down. Sometimes I have the hoover running so you can hear me, I'll turn it off. So get all this out and then uh, we'll 
fit the, the ash pan back in. Right, so that's all hoovered out and ready to go. Um, this is the bush de Raminage that we use to clean the chimney flue out. And what it does, it goes in where you put the logs and it burns away and a chemical reaction takes place inside the flue and it cleans all your flue down. So once that's done, it's all cooled down. I shall hoover it all out again because it'll bring down lots of soot. That will clear the, the chimney flue and uh, we'll be ready for the coming season. So, yeah. Another important thing to mention, this is in conjunction with having your chimney swept regularly. Uh, it's, it's a vital thing to have them swept correctly. Um, there's lots of insurance companies that won't pay out if there's any issues if you haven't had your chimney swept in quite some time. So that's another important factor to bear in mind. So, yeah. Time to clean the blue enamel. If you're thinking about having one of these fitted, make sure you get a qualified, competent person. Um, these can be very dangerous if they're not fitted correctly. If you're thinking of buying a second hand one, always make sure the transportation is good because these cast iron frames, if you like, can get easily get damaged in transit. Obviously, um, they're not very easy to repair, cracks in cast iron, so get it from a reputable person or company, have it delivered properly, and uh, yeah. All right. Let's get on to the next part. Yeah, look at that weather, it's absolutely teeming down. It's okay if you're a duck. Right, so gloves on. It's not very pleasant stuff. It's black graphite polish. So, soft cloth, little dab in. You just work round. And put, put it on with a brush. Not too thick. It covers quite liberally. It's actually surprising how rusty they get throughout the summer. Moisture. They look a million dollars once they're polished up again though. So we get a good covering. And we'll give it a light buff off. And then we'll light the fire. And then that will set the polish, it will harden off. You get a little bit of uh, fume smell from it, but nothing too much. Make sure it's ventilated. Also, make sure your smoke alarms are working and your carbon monoxide's functioning correctly. So, yeah, a good time to check everything out. Ready for the coming winter months. So in the summer we use the gas in the electric cooker, the other side of the kitchen for obvious reasons, so it doesn't get too hot in here. And then around about now we start switching between the two and then winter we mainly use this. So this heats the kitchen and most of the downstairs as well. So right, that's it. that half done. Let's do the other half. There, yeah, that's before I've even polished it, so you can see the difference. Right, let's get this job finished. Right, that will do us what we need. Remove any excess. Let me know what you think of the range cooker. So, uh, it's our pride and joy, really. Very much it cost us. Nearly 10 years we've had it, and it's never let us down. Economical to run, we use all recycled wood from a local sawmill. So uh, that saves it going to landfill. And also, I've got to go and chop some kindling. Yeah, weather's not looking too good for that, but I'll find somewhere sheltered. Now, before I forget, I must tell you the story. When we first moved in here, uh, there was a ply sheet right the way across the opening of the fire here. We've just a little opening for another fire. Anyway, we took the board off and looked behind it and thought, what on earth's that? It was probably halfway up the range, about that high there. And we later found out it was owl droppings. So me, Sam, her mum and dad spent the next hour or so digging it out. <laughs> and then behind it, we found a beautiful old cast iron fire back which is still there now 
attached to the wall. There was an open fire in here originally. That's why it's so black at the back of it. I've put an enamel panel there just to cover it up. But um, yeah, I'm going to improve that area a little bit later on. But that's another day. So yeah, um, say so we purchased the fire nine years ago and it's a grand addition to our kitchen. Right. Well, I was going to go out and chop some wood, but oh no. That's teeming down. Right, I think I'm going to cut some up in the kitchen. A bit naughty, but hey ho. <laughs> Right, time to light the fire. Normally place a couple of fire lighters in there, get them going. Saves a lot of hassle. Right. That's in there. Vents up. Let me show you inside. Right, good flame going. Let's go and check if I've got any smoke out the top. Right, well it's a bit hard to see at the moment, but yeah, I think there's smoke coming out the top. Yes, there is, so that's good. Nice and clear. Right, back inside. After a few years of operating these appliances, you do get to know whether the flue's clear or not. Normally, if it's drawing like that, good. Plenty of flame, it means there's good draw and a clear passage up through the uh, flue liner. If it smoulders and sometimes goes out, it can sometimes uh, signal that there's problems with the flue. But sometimes I've done this and lit it, and when there's a weird down pressure, sometimes it just goes out. So, uh, yeah, you have to be on your toes with it. So, I'll just shut it up, let it draw a bit longer, no smoke coming out the top. So what I'll do, I'll get a, a little pile of wood on there, once I know it's safely operating okay, and then let that die out, and then I'll put the raminage on there, and let that do its magic, and then that's it. It's ready to go. Now I always start the fire off with pine and then once it gets going I use beech and a mixture of beech and oak. Predominantly beech, it burns a lot sort of stronger if you like. Uh, it doesn't last as long as oak but when you combine the two together you get the right balance so ah, that warms you up just looking at it. And there you can see the flames are just licking over to the right hand side it gets drawn across the top of the cooker so the heat can be distributed. When I shut the valve you may see the flames go even further to the right. Yep, you can. So yeah, it's all functioning good. I shall get the uh, raminage on now. And that's it. So, when you purchase one of these, inside, if it's a, a good one, it'll have a certificate of guarantee, and that's basically to say that you've had your chimney cleaned with one of these, and uh, this is for your insurance. So, yeah, it's well worth having. And to show you. Well, it looks like, it just looks like that. No, it's not a Yule log, <laughs> any other sort of log. Uh, yeah, that goes on. I'll take the plastic off and that'll just smolder away and that'll do its trick. So, yeah, a brilliant invention. So I do have my chimneys swept as well, so that's great. All right, ready for the winter. 
Right, the fire's started to die down a bit now, so in it goes. Right, in it goes. Now it can just do its magic. About five or six hours. Yep. I'd say that it's a little bit too wet to go out there. Right, that's it for today's video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell button. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.